Typically, the performance assessments that I used to see a few years ago uh, were surveys, uh, and then they proceeded to interviews. But what I found uh, more recently are really great uh, practices around performance assessment uh, is to have a third party, an objective third party, uh, do interviews with the individual board members. So these are individual assessments, not of the board overall. And I have found uh, those to be helpful both in terms of the questions as well as the sharing, uh, if you will, of what other board members feel works well or doesn't work well. Uh, but uh, the one most important part of that third party assessment is actually acting upon it. So if there are uh, gaps in terms of either board engagement or board chemistry or board culture, acting upon those individual assessments is really the critical part. And that, unless you have a very strong uh, lead director or chair uh, to be able to effectively execute and, and allow the board to be better at what it is not doing currently, that's the critical part of a performance assessment, in my opinion. In my experience, in Italy, we have um, a law which uh, implies, well, it's actually, it's a self-regulating uh, uh, code of conduct, which requires that after nine years, board members are no longer independent. So in any case, refreshment will occur every nine years. I think board evaluations uh, sometimes are very light, or at least in my experience, I have seen a lot of companies doing very light um, evaluations. That sometimes they just say, are we accomplishing what we set to accomplish? And have people been coming to the board meetings and have they attended everything that, all the calls we had and just look at the numbers. There are other boards that are doing the, the, the job of saying, what are the skills? What's the mix that we need to have in the boardroom so we can really have a very powerful uh, and, 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 and strong board to lead a, a company and, and to um, realize the fiduciary duty that we have as board members? So I have, I think, a best-in-class situation where we do individual, uh, an external individual comes and uh, interviews every single board member about uh, the company, about the chairman and CEO, and about our individual board members. And so all, once all of that is done, you're given individual feedback from not, no names given, but you're given an individual feedback as how you did last year as a board member. And that's peer-to-peer -peer review. I, I think it's very helpful. I sit on a number of public company boards today, and all of those companies have an annual assessment of how the board is doing. It gives us an opportunity to look at the work that we're doing, to let us be honest with ourselves collectively, where we need improvement, where we might be work in progress, where we might have some blind spots. And diversity is one of those areas that we will look at. And today, we only look collectively at the board as a whole and not necessarily giving uh, report cards on individuals on the board, um, with the exception usually of the chairman. Usually there's a question about, is the chairman doing the right job for the company? Because that is such a material role to make sure that we have consensus on decision making, that it's important to get feedback for the chairman as well, so he or she can improve their performance. And I do think that it's been helpful to boards to do this. I think it's a moment in time where you can gather information in an anonymous fashion uh, and let board members be maybe more honest in their feedback versus doing it face to face. And I, what I've also seen work very well is having a third party, whether it's an outside law firm or it's a, someone who specializes in helping boards with board education and board composition, uh, actually be sort of that third party sounding board that might put the themes and the, and the responses together. I believe that onboarding is very important. Um, and I know that some boards I've been on don't do it at all. And I think I've come to the conclusion that it's important because they don't do it. Um, and the way it's done uh, generally is you get to spend time with all of the operations of management, usually one-on-one, -on -one, you with the, the top management person in that area. You spend a good deal of time, or at least a few hours, with the CEO um, during the onboarding process so that you can talk about anything and you're open to speaking with any individual board member for up to a period of time. Um, after you 
get on board and you've done all of that, once the, because it's a formal process, um, then, uh, you know, I think you feel more comfortable as a board member. I think as you add new board members uh, to existing boards, or if you completely replace a board, such as I went through very recently, uh, the important uh, part is to make sure that you're getting uh, the opportunity to hear the diverse views of each board member quickly. And in, in that sense, I think the best onboarding uh, process that I've seen is where you are able to quickly build both trust between the board members as well as a personal connection to each of the board members and then add the knowledge of the company over time uh, to those board members. And what I mean by that is the old onboarding sessions used to be, you know, before you came into your first board meeting, you had maybe a half day and you went through governance documents and that sort of thing. Whereas if you do it over a period of time, uh, what I've seen really effective is if you take pieces of strategy and drill down and have all of the board members go through that, both the existing board members as well as the new board members, it, it level sets all of the board members to a certain level. And as we get more and more new directors into the boardrooms, I think that onboarding process becomes critical. Yesterday, we had a discussion around the onboarding process for new board members. And uh, the larger companies are great. They're really spending the time. They're consistently training uh, new board members. They're setting them up with buddies to actually help them through the first six months, one year, two years, who knows how long it would take. Uh, I think it's the smaller ones and that um, I think as a board member that's new, you gotta go in there and say, can I get some uh, board education? Can you help me figure out what's going on with the company?